This episode of HD Nation is brought to you by West Host, offering premium web hosting since 1998. Time to get our HD Nation on. Oh man, we were talking about this before about like I you know I, I got to borrow the Samsung 8000 and uh, use it at home for it a couple ruined weeks. You. It ruined me. <laughs> so we, we realized over lunch today that if you want to avoid the desire to upgrade your HD TV, avoid looking at the latest models in the <sighs> store. That way you won't notice the shiny, silky deep pool, lake-like, wondrous, luxurious blacks, which, I, I, don't get me wrong, like, I... Contrast is important. Contrast is important, but this is like a three-year-old set, and it's, it just doesn't have the blacks of the, I, of the brand. I'm in the same boat so. as you. I'm yeah. hesitant to upgrade, because I'm still looking at what's coming out for 2011, <laughs> but I'd like to upgrade. <laughs> I'm just, I'm not looking. I'm looking. I'm testing, but not looking. Testing. Well, that's, it's even worse for you, because you, <laughs> you know, you've seen everything. That's good, though. I, I, I like that information in my head so I can make informed decisions and provide our audience with, uh, I don't know, what I'm thinking is going to be the next great product. Samsung, LG, Sony, Vizio all have Panasonic. some really good stuff coming out. They're all, they're all awesome. There's so much good work going on. And there's some up-and-comers, too, that I'm curious to look at for this year as well. Are you going to hold that for a 21 by 9? I, I want one really bad. <laughs> really, really bad. I, I, can't wait. I want to get one in for a review, though. I hate to be the first to take that d dive into any new piece of technology. I'd rather... Uh, I'd rather evaluate it and see how it really feels if I'm ready to. I'm not the early adopter person. Trust, I'm more of the. But verify. I'll, I'll take the second <laughs> gen model. Always. Hey, look, we got a video question from Gabriel. Cool. Hello, Techzilla. This is Gabriel Fija talking about the Panasonic HDTV VT25. As you can see on certain standard definition shows, we have a black and white distortion up on the top. If you could tell us how to get rid of this, please let us know or tell us someone who can. Thanks. Love your show. Hey, Gabriel, what you're seeing at the top of the screen is really, it's a manifestation of the closed captioning and other data information that's really? creeping into the video portion, the video, uh, the visible picture portion of the video signal. Now, the good news is, is that it's not a problem with your TV, but rather it's an issue with the broadcaster of that particular standard definition channel. They're allowing what they call the VBI, or the vertical blanking inter interval, to be shifted down a couple of lines, uh, basically into the visual, invisible portion of the picture where it can be seen. And uh, that's a no, no. I mean, engineers should not be allowing this no, to happen. No, but you can also consider too that nowadays with budgets the way they are, maybe having a high quality right. engineer. Well, that would fix the solution. Actually, maybe the but, engineer is working on other things like keeping the hamsters turning the generators. But it's also things. an indication that you probably have the overscan disabled on your TV. Now, I mentioned one solution would be to convince that broadcaster to hire an experienced engineer who is uh, good at basically properly syncing the vertical positions of standard and high definition broadcast. Pretty unlikely. A more practical option for you would be to view the HD channels whenever possible. And if you get the same channel in SD and HD, stop watching the SD version. You'll see a lot less of that with the HD feed. If neither of those options will work and you absolutely have to get rid of that annoying line, you can enable overscan. I, I just can't believe I said that, though. <laughs> I just, so this is that's like the worst solution I could think of, is actually re-enable overscan for that. But I turn it off again as soon as I'm watching something that didn't have that artifact. I've gotten used to that line, and I like seeing it there, even though, even though you should never see it. I, at least I know that I'm seeing the entire picture. Right. With, with that information <laughs> creeping into the visible portion of the picture and all. So I, I feel your pain, but... You could change the overscan setting on the TV. Some boxes, some set-top boxes, cable or satellite boxes, actually have a setting that will allow you to scale within the box itself. I, I try not to mess with that too much. I tend to leave it right. at one video output format, like 1080i output to your TV, and then do the adjustments in the TV itself. So hmm. I wouldn't, it, or if your cable box or satellite box, I see this on more often, has a native output mode, leave it at that and let the TV do all the scaling itself. But. Otherwise, leave it at 1080i output and enjoy, and enable overscan if you have to. But otherwise, I, I like the line. Want to see your video question on Techzilla? Just keep it at 20, maybe 25 seconds. Upload it to YouTube and send us a link to it in an email with video question in the subject line. And if you're lucky, if you're good, we'll put it right up on the show. Ross wrote in, I was reading the message board a month ago, and I came across a post that said if you turn off the overscan on the Panasonic's G25, the pixel orbiter wouldn't work. 
I'd love to know if this is true because I'm scared to turn off the overscan on my TV. Raza. Yeah. Well, pixel orbiting is, as far as my understanding goes, it's just basically shifting the picture around just slightly, usually mm -hmm. by a pixel, just to keep it from settling on any one spot for very long. To prevent so, burning? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So especially if you're dealing with the old school logos that used to be in the corner mm -hmm. where they weren't transparent and they weren't allowing any, it's basically a solid white right. or a solid dark object. That was not good. But anyway, I forwarded Roz's question to the good folks at Panasonic, and the response from the company's engineers in Japan was, quote, it cannot be turned off, speaking of the pixel mm. orbiting functions. So adjust the overscan setting without fear of disabling that pixel orbiter function, and may all of your pixels be mapped one-to-one. -one. Unless you've got a problem with the SD. Unless you're yeah. watching that SD feed, and that, <laughs> that data line is just messing with you. But again, complain to your broadcaster. It's uh, tell them to hire an engineer and pay him well so that they can just correct that once and for all. It, it can be done, <laughs> I'm telling you. Anyway, hey, the number of Blu-ray releases has skyrocketed in the last year or two, and so in the interest of time, we're not going to be listing every single Blu-ray release anymore. However, we will still highlight a few each week that we feel deserve the spotlight, and you can still get the full list in our show notes. So here are our featured Blu-ray releases of March 1st, 2011. First up, Out of Sight. Starring George Clooney and Jennifer Lopez, this 1998 Steven Soderbergh film has been released on HD DVD, but now it gets a proper Blu-ray release. If you've only seen the hacked up version on some nosebleed channel on basic cable, you might want to grab Out of Sight on Blu-ray. Patrick loves this movie. It's based on an Elmore Leonard novel and bridges Steven Soderbergh's early work as an indie darling with his blockbuster flicks like Aaron Brockovich, Traffic, and The Ocean's titles. The 50 gigabyte Blu-ray retains the original 185 to 1 aspect ratio, uses a VC1 codec, and a DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 soundtrack. HighDefDigest.com's Drew Taylor calls the transfer, quote, a stunner, which is great news because there are gorgeous colors all over this flick and some really great acting. Check it out. Next up, The Cable Guy, 15th Anniversary Edition, directed by Ben Stiller. Yes, that Ben Stiller. And starring Jim Carrey, this 1996 film follows a slightly disturbed cable guy who just wants to be your friend. With an MPEG-4 AVC codec, a 240 to 1 aspect ratio, and a DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 mix, this 25 gig disc also includes 25 minutes of deleted and extended scenes, a six minute gag reel, two behind the scenes featurettes, and much more. Blu-ray.com says the transfer isn't perfect, but quote, breathes new life into this 15-year-old movie, and that it's quote, quite good, besting by leaps and bounds, the DVD that was released way back in that format's infancy, unquote. Also released this week, Bambi. That's right, this 69-year-old Disney film is being released on a 50 gigabyte disc with an MPEG-4 AVC codec, a 135 to 1 aspect ratio, all paired with the DVD as well. Blu-ray.com gives the movie itself and the video quality a perfect score, saying, quote, every frame looks as if it had been lifted from an animator's desk, and that this restoration is, quote, so beautiful, so impeccable, so utterly faithful to its source that it transports audiences back in time. The soundtrack is unfortunately not lossless, but it's close with a 2046 kbps DTS HD high resolution 7.1 soundtrack. And Blu-ray.com notes that while the track is, quote, gracefully but noticeably aged, it still, quote, sounds great in spite of its 70 years. And don't forget to check out our show notes for the rest of this week's releases. It's time to thank one of our sponsors, West Host. West Host has been offering premium web hosting since 1998. It's very affordable at 19 cents per day, and you get free US-based support available 24-7 by phone, chat, and email. West Host even offers free website transfers, a 60-day money-back guarantee, great server performance, and one-click installs of hundreds of apps. Just visit westhost.com slash techzilla to get an exclusive 25% discount off web hosting. 